So one of the coolest things about having a YouTube channel is that sometimes when you go to new cities, you get recognized, which yeah, okay, sounds a little vain maybe, but when you don't have a camera, cause you're an idiot, always bring a camera. When you don't bring a camera and you walk into a camera store, you might just find a nerd like you who is willing to lend you their camera. So here I am in Ohio once more doing my VFX gigging. I have a little dilemma. See, I was only supposed to be here for two days, but then they extended me past the weekend. So now I have a free weekend, but I didn't bring a camera. I didn't follow my own rules. See, I didn't think I was gonna have any time to shoot, so why pack film? It's just one more thing to carry. Well, now I do definitely regret that. I guess I gotta go out and shoot with my Sony. I, I know, I know, I know. Before you say anything, I'm disappointed in me as well. So there's at least that, but I got something, I guess. So let's go out and shoot. Let's just say the Sony wasn't cutting it. I had to go to a camera store to figure out some sort of alternative to shoot some film. I can't shoot megapixels anymore. So to fix this issue, I needed to go to Dodd's camera. And lo and behold, my savior had arrived. Philip. Okay, so we're all caught up now. Today, we're gonna to be diving into my first impressions on the Fuji GA645. With a camera like this just dropping in your lap for two days, you best believe I'm going to make a video about it. But first, let me just say the biggest thanks to Philip, who lent me his camera out of the goodness of his heart. I mean, it's not every day that you can walk into a camera store and have someone recognize you and then say, don't worry about it, bro. Take my $1,300 camera out for a spin, and I didn't even need parental supervision. How nice is that? I mean, I wouldn't even lend someone my toothbrush for like two minutes. So definitely go give some love to my new buddy, Philip because this episode would totally be a snooze fest if the stars hadn't aligned and blessed these hands with a new toy to play with. I'm just really f***ing pumped right now. Excuse my language. Uh, I thought I was gonna have to buy a camera or buy a point and shoot and then just use that, which could have been something cool too, but like this, I'm excited. Right off the bat, using this camera is pretty enjoyable. And forget about the sex appeal, especially the 15 year anniversary with the slimming black and gold. I love gold. If you haven't had a chance to grace your eyes or your ear holes on such a camera, let me give you a little taste of what I know, which is not much. Philip described this camera as a medium format point and shoot. A lot of the times, you can just set it and forget it. Really, think of this thing as a giant contacts T2, except for all this plastic, and it's medium format. And potentially won't make your hands sweat holding it because you think you might drop it, resulting in a crap ton of money down the drain, needing to explain to your significant other why you've been crying for two weeks straight. Let's see, let's just go all up in and try it out. Oh, mm. It's messy. I'm so picky when it comes to barbecue, like, and the fact that I don't want to finish this barbecue is like saying something because I love barbecue. When first picking up this camera, you'll notice that you can't twist that short nub of a lens. And that's because it's primarily an autofocus first camera with the ability to manual focus if you really wanna make your life a living hell. For the most part, I just use this camera in autofocus. Actually, I only use it in autofocus. I mean, I do drive manual transmission, but since I've been in Ohio, I've gotten a taste of what automatics are like. The autofocus is pretty killer. With that said, it did miss focus once or twice. And weirdly on some shots that it probably shouldn't have missed. But I think I'm just gonna chalk that up to weird user error.
Delta 400. This is precarious. I should not step on this. It's actually pretty great that they still mow the lawn even though this place is fully abandoned. On the back of the camera, you'll find a few things. A dial for selecting your shooting modes, a data button for you'll literally never use, a self timer for all your Disneyland selfie stick shots, and a flash for, you know, all those bad flashes. <laughs> How meta, but not Facebook. Also on that back dial is your ISO settings, and that's just where you set your film speed. Super simple. Okay, so I have something on my mind. Earlier, I was shooting with my digital camera because obviously I didn't have a film camera with me. And I was really trying to make that work. It's weird because I have this GA645 now and I just feel so much freer. I feel open. I feel like, I feel like taking photos and I don't know what it is because for all intents and purposes, it's a, it's a fully automatic camera. It's doing everything for me. And so what about it? is different. What about that feeling of having a film camera in my hand is different? Is it just the camera? Is the camera just different? Is is it a mindset? I can't figure it out for the life of me because I have been looking at digital Leicos. I've been looking at digital Leicos and I'm sorry. I know it's not what you wanted to hear, but my thought is, is like, will I have that same feeling with a digital Leica that I have with a film like a or, or any digital camera like what if I buy a Fuji digital camera does that have the same feeling as a film camera will I just know inherently that it has mechanisms inside of it that makes me want to puke I don't know I don't know I don't know As far as shooting modes go, you have manual exposure, aperture priority, and program mode. And honestly, if you're a lazy POS like me, then yeah, you'll probably just use that giant P on the back. That's where this camera shines. But if you wanted to slip that GA645 into manual focus mode, you totally can. You just have to use the dial on the top to set the distance in meters. But let's face it, you won't, because you don't know meters. And you're not gonna learn anytime soon. So after killing a few illuminating hours shooting some glorious 645 images, I met up with Philip in downtown Cleveland for a romantic sunset stroll, but not until I got myself some barbecue. I found myself in Mabel's, which is so good. Honestly, some of the best barbecue I've ever had and definitely the best barbecue I had in Ohio. I'm just salivating thinking about it right now. Philip was rocking his Leica M6 and after hearing the shutter a few times, oh, it definitely made me miss my baby back home. I mean, my girlfriend <laughs> and my Leica.
One really cool thing is that when your camera is on the last frame, it beeps, letting you know you're gonna have to change the roll soon. Kind of like your carbon monoxide detector telling you you should probably get the f out of your apartment because that's why you've been vomiting for the past two days. Both are letting you know very important pieces of information. Another sunset with Philip or Hello. Joe, whoever the f he is. Yeah, I don't know yet. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm editing over there. And I'm taking photos over here. So I thought this was kind of cool. Overall, shooting with the GA645 was definitely awesome. The quality you get from this lens is pure tack sharp. And the flash also had this really nice soft fall off when used. It's really nice to have in those situations where you just need a little bit of extra light. I'm not sure I personally have it in my camera collection, but only because I really like to have full control over my cameras. The biggest thing I missed was the ability to focus myself. Autofocus is great, but only for special occasions, at least for me. I do have to admit, I had a lot of fun with the sexy camera. I wouldn't hesitate one second to be able to shoot it again. Up until this point, I wasn't a huge fan of Ohio and Cleveland in general, but I think it was due to the fact that I just really didn't see her properly until this moment. I was basically stuck inside a hotel or on set most of the time. It just took one new friend showing me around the city. I also wanted to give thanks to Hidden Light and Flagstaff, Arizona for developing and scanning all my film for this episode. And another massive thanks to Philip for just being such a rad dude. At the end of the day, the best thing about this channel is my ability to connect with cool people I might not have met otherwise. And if you've only learned one thing today, it's always bring a camera. Well, I guess unless you have a YouTube channel and somehow get recognized and you can borrow the camera for free. But maybe don't count on that one. Mm. Mm hmm Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Doesn't have barbecue sauce on it. They gave me barbecue sauce, which is a good thing, because it needs it. Not a lot of flavor there, but it's not bad.